those aliens just keep getting faster and faster. Space Invaders, groundbreaking, influential and an icon of video gaming history. Released in 1978 by Taito and developed pretty much single-handedly by Tomohiro Nishikado, it wasn't an immediate success, but after several slow months on the fledgling arcade scene, its success grew and grew and kept on growing. By 1982 it had grossed $2 billion and had become a worldwide phenomenon, even sparking its own moral panic, with the world's parents fearing, rightly as it turns out, that they were rearing a generation that was completely and hopelessly addicted to computer technology. Whilst most games from this era have been forgotten, who remembers Exidi's Car Polo, Space Invaders lives on in popular culture, remembered as one of the titles that propelled games from being a mere sideshow and into an art form in themselves. Now, Space Invaders may be massively primitive by modern standards, but what it does, it does very well, with lots of neat touches and innovations that made this game really stand out back in the late 70s. Perhaps its neatest feature is its increasing difficulty curve. Yes, the game gets harder as it goes on. Not a big deal now, but very new back then. The game starts out with those titular invaders moving back and forth at a glacial pace, making their way ever so slowly towards the bottom of the screen and the player's demise. However, once the player starts destroying those nasties, then things begin to speed up. The more you kill, the faster it gets, until with just one alien left, it goes at a real clip. As it turns out, this killer feature wasn't originally an intended one, but a result of the rather limited hardware that the game was developed on. The fewer aliens on the screen, the faster the system could draw them, and the faster the game could run. Rather than try and solve this problem, Tomohiro Nishikado decided to work this into the game as a challenging gameplay mechanic. So how exactly does this speed up work in the final product? Let's take a look. It all revolves around the fact that in this game, only one alien ever moves at once. If I slow it right down, you can see what's happening. Going left to right, bottom to top, each alien takes it in turn to move two pixels towards the edge of the screen, one after the other, starting with the bottom left corner. So in each frame of animation, only one alien actually moves. When all the aliens visible on the screen have finished moving, the cycle starts again, continuing until they reach the edge when they switch directions and drop down one row. Slowed down to this speed, you can see each one making its move before the next one gets its turn. At the start of the game, there are five rows of 11 aliens, giving 55 in total, meaning it takes 55 frames for all the aliens to take their turn. With the game running at 60 frames per second, this means that it takes just under a second for one movement cycle to complete. As the game continues though, the more aliens are destroyed, the faster the movement cycle can complete, and the faster the group of remaining aliens can move. When there are 30 left, it takes just half a second, at 10, a sixth of a second, and when there are just two, all the aliens are making their two pixel move 30 times a second. The more you kill, the fewer are drawn, and the faster the whole thing can happen. What started out as a glacial movement becomes much, much quicker, making those aliens much harder to track and much harder to accurately shoot. What about that final alien, the one that seems almost impossible to kill? Well, it isn't just your imagination. The last one really is harder, and it's not just because it's faster. Yes, it has a trick up its sleeve. The last alien on the screen moves two pixels in each frame of animation when going left, like the others, but speeds up to three pixels each time when going right. Yes, it moves faster in one direction than the other. This little ploy really throws out your aim when the pressure is on, without it really being obvious why. Superbly devious, I'm sure you'll agree. Moving just one alien per frame may seem like a bit of a weird way of doing things, but it works very well, and it's hard to imagine how it could have been done better looking at the end result. Given the massive limitations of the system, and the fact that this game was doing things that had never been done in a game before, it is extremely clever. That Space Invaders, a game with a bit more depth than it may at first seem to have, a classic made into a classic, virtually by accident. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this brief exposition of Space Invaders. If you have enjoyed it, well, please do subscribe if you'd like to see more of this kind of thing.